Welcome to Legal Minds. In this presentation, we shall be covering Section 20 of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861. Under that provision, it says that whoever shall unlawfully and maliciously wound or inflict any grievous bodily harm upon any other person, either with or without any weapon or instrument, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and being convicted thereof shall be liable. In other words, regardless of whether you use a weapon or not, there are two ways you can commit this offence. Either you can maliciously wound or you can maliciously inflict GBH. So what will amount to a wound? What's sufficient? In the case of Moriarty, the court said there must be a break in the continuation of the skin. On the other hand, the court in the case of Eisenhower said that there must be a break in both layers of the skin. In that case, ruptured blood vessels in the eye was not sufficient. It did not constitute a wound because it didn't involve a break in the skin. Now, a trivial cut will be a wound if it's deep enough, but a mere scratch will not suffice. A mere scratch will probably be a battery, possibly section 47, but that's pushing it. It's most likely going to be something like a battery. Now, the case of Savage and Palmer to show is that you can actually wound somebody without committing a battery, but such circumstances are rare. How would you do that? Well, you could chase somebody down the street and in fear of their life or in fear of violence, they'll run away from you. So you have committed a technical assault, but there is no battery because you've not actually applied force. If they then run into a lamppost and they suffer a large gash to the head, you can be guilty of Section 20 wounding, even though you did not commit a battery. But again, as the court said in Savage and Parmiter, it's possible but such circumstances are rare. I shall now hand you over to Denzo, who is going to cover um, GBH, what GBH means, uh, the meaning of inflict and the mens rea for section 20. Thank you, Dominic. And now we'll move on to grievous body harm. In DP and Smith, this is held to be really serious harm. However, in Sanders, the judge held that serious harm is sufficient. We know that this is judged from objective standard rather than defendant's perception as confirmed by the case of Brown. In the case of Brandy, it was held that the totality of injuries that would normally fall short of GBH as single injuries can be sufficient given that there are enough injuries. Even in the case of Wood, it was held that broken collarbone could amount to GBH. On the more psychiatric side of things, Ireland was the case that said that serious psychiatric injury could also amount to GBH. In addition to this, DECA held that infecting somebody with HIV could also amount to grievous body harm. The same can be said for most kinds of diseases, infections, or even viruses. And this does not have to occur within the context of sexual intercourse. So for infliction, there is no need to actually commit assault or battery, as shown in DECA. In that case, the defendant had HIV and slept with the victim. He knew he had HIV, but did not tell the victim. There was no assault or battery, but that did not matter because infliction in the strict sense is not required. Lord Stein in Ireland held that there is no radical diversion between the word cause and inflict. Infliction, therefore, means causation for the purpose of Section 20. So for the mens rea, in the case of Savage and Parmenter, it is established that the defendant must have intended or been reckless to causing some harm. There is no need to establish he intended or was reckless as to causing serious harm or actual harm suffered by the victim.